guys. Good morning and welcome to week four of our giveaways here. I hope that you've been inspired by every week's new class and release. And for us, it's super exciting to be able to just dedicate some time exclusively to you uh, so that we can bring paper to life and make amazing happen. I hope that you're all just super excited as to what's to come in the world and the future. I think that um, this is a great moment for all of us to just come together to connect, to create, to make, to share, to give, um, but most importantly, to feel the energy of the world that we have around us and the amazing universe that God has created for us to be able to channel into. And thanks again, guys, for joining us week after week for every single live, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's for our workshops or our classes. It means the world to us that you are here, that you want to participate with us, and that you want to make amazing happen with us. We are always finding ourselves working incredibly hard to keep you inspired, to keep you engaged, to keep you motivated, to keep you making. Uh, and I hope that we're doing just that. And if we are doing that, then please, the way that you can help us out in return is by sharing and by helping us build our creative community. It makes the world of a difference for us and our small business. Um, and again, thank you guys so much. It's always appreciated. Um, so hopefully we have some of you guys during our live. If you're catching the re-recording, then um, enjoy. And you can fast forward through any of the shout outs. But if we do have somebody out there, then please make yourself known. <laughs> yes, we do have Adam with Adam. us. Adam! We have, uh, let's see, he's actually doing the happy dance. We have Aurora Gomez. Hi, Aurora. We How's have it going? Uh, Martha. Saying hello. Hi, Martha. We have Christine from Michigan. Hi, Christine from Michigan. And we have Andrea. Good afternoon. Zuckerman. Uh, Jody Miller. Hello. Hi, Jody. Cindy Kurtz. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. How are you doing? Hopefully, you're feeling better, Cindy. Yes. So many hellos and good afternoon. So exciting. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and switch over to that top view. Um, so that we can look at the digital file that I'm going to be working with. Now, I did share with you guys that um, this was a little bit more of a cultural download or release. This is the full download. This is the freebie that everybody got if you're into it. You, don't not, you do not have to use the images that I am using. You can use any images you want. Ultimately, um, if anything, the idea and the concept of the projects that we'll, are what we would love for you guys to have and to enjoy. Um, but, but again, if you are into, if you do have someone who might resonate with, you know, let your conchas be your guide, and of course they're gonna find it funny or enjoyable um, then of course by all means you know go ahead and jump in on that digi file or use this the one that you got for free um, you know to be able to recreate that uh, if you are new to RG Avenue um, when we do launch a stamp set it always releases with a digital file and an outline file and an SVG now some of our images have a stamp set and some of them do not so you just have to read carefully if it says you know stamp and digital or digital only. If it's digital only, that means that you just get digital files that you get to print out with all of our exclusive artwork. Um, and this one is the regular printed PDF. If you're like me and you're just gonna do everything by hand, then this is gonna be your best friend. Um, but if you have a Cricut or if you have a scan and cut predominantly, we've also outlined it for you so that you don't have to worry about it not finding the um, places to close so you can print out the outline version you can print out the one without the outline so anyone that's going to be the best for you we've also included this file um, for you guys because if you don't know how to separate the files and you just need to print out the digi file to create several of these then we've included that in the regular concha live file in case you want to do something like what we're going to do today and it's just going to be these darling little bag toppers um, for, you know, to, to share with a friend or to send to someone. So super cute. I love them. Um, and then real quick here, we have Cindy Kurtz. Uh, she's doing better every day. So thank you for asking. Good, Cindy. And Ms. Linda Gorman is here with us. Hi, Linda. And she says, most of the bakeries around here are either closed or have 
or or have never heard of conchas. I oh, tried, I'm sure. But I tried to find one. They're so different. We're gonna have to have Carrie make us all one. <laughs> Send them over, Carrie. Send them over, Carrie. All right, guys. So for this one, I'm gonna be using several colors of cardstock. I'm gonna be using my sweet cane. Um, I have about three sheets of sweet cane because I'm gonna need probably about that many. I have some powdered sugar. I have a couple of sheets of my tangy orange, which I absolutely adore, and some sweet blue. I'm also using my absolute favorite, Sour Mist, and a little bit of Sweet Banana. Um, so these are the colors that I'm going to be using predominantly for all my projects. If you didn't get to see my Facebook Live, let me show you. I'm also going to be using the Artisan Tile background stamp. It just goes so perfect with my conchas. Um, of course, you can use anything you'd like. Uh, and, if, and if you don't have this guy, then don't forget that whatever I typically use during the demos for the free workshop, we put at cost um, so that you're not feeling the burden of, of having to get anything full price. So you can always grab that at cost, uh, and it's available on the website at cost. All right. So one of the parties we're creating, you know I've been into creating the long cards, and I almost kind of like want to create a long card every single week that we do these because it kind of started this whole process. Um, and I wanted to create a different kind of long card. Um, everybody remembers the love notes um, that we used to make back in the day or the hugs that I used to make also when I first started um, my other company. But... Uh, check these out. I wanted, what a cute little idea. I thought it's a long card, but I wanted a way to hold three different notes and three different messages because maybe it's coming from three different people in your family, or maybe you're sending someone three exclusive wishes, or maybe you're sending someone, you know, three different coupons for something special, or maybe you're sending someone, I love you. And you know, like, I, you can, uh, what I love about this concept is like, if you did an I love you card, this first one could be all about I. Like, I am, you know, so much better because of you. I am inspired because of you. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is that you're feeling about that person. And love. Love means what to you. So then you can talk about what love means to you. And then this last one, of course, is you. So it's all about you. And you are whoever you're sending it to. What's so great is that they all come out. So it's almost like a little, little sweet note holder. Let's call these sweet notes because they're not necessarily the size of a love note. Um, they're not the size of a hug. They're a little bit smaller, um, and I'm going to call them a sweet note. So it's just a little sweet note, a little message that I think you'll enjoy or your recipient will enjoy. But they come in this little holder that if you're not going to send it in the mail, you can put this starting little bow on. Um, and they just kind of slide in. And I think that's super cute. That's I, such a just, super cute idea. It's such an amazing idea. Um, and I love it. And depending on how you design it and depending on what you're working it, how you're working it in, I absolutely adore it. So we're going to create one of these. And what's even best is if you did want to mail it, it absolutely still fits. It's a little bit longer than our regular long cards, okay? But I made it so that it still fits the legal size envelope. Like so. So it still fits a legal size envelope. You can still send it in the mail. And just send somebody something extra special. Or you can also do if it was me sending a card, make amazing happen. And so what does make mean? What does amazing mean? What does happen mean? And I love, I just love this concept. Um, and I've had it in my head for a little bit, but I just now brought it to life with Concha Life. We're also going to create this beautiful card that I already showed you. I just love the background use. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's beautiful and it's perfect. And it's just a regular card um, in case you need to send someone a special note. Uh, we're going to create one of our thick acrylic-like pins um, so that you can put it on any wooden clothespin hanger. Um, you can either use it in your planners, you can use it for a treat bag like this, um, or even just to clip your potato chips or whatever that you're not done with. So super fun little gift idea. 
And this one's the one that we're going to be playing with a little bit more because it's a little different. Um, it's This one says, from my corazón to yours. I love that sentiment. Um, and then when you slide out that belly band, you have a little peekaboo card. Okay? So we love that. I'm leaving it not absolutely adhered because it's the first one I ever make of these. Um, and I'm just going to have to, you know, play with my measurements so that I can give them to you on the spot. But isn't that neat? I've seen quite a few of these now, and I wanted to jump in and just kind of figure it out on my own. Um, and I believe that I have. I'm trying to... Let me catch up on your messages or notes in case you have a question for me because Miss G stepped out for a minute. And Michelle is with the kiddos. Um, I'm here now. So did you read Sandra? No, no, Sandra, no. I know she's working today. I just wanted to say hi. We'll catch the replay. Bernice, I'm excited. I paired my phone on to our new TV. So, so no more small screen. Wow. That's so cool, Bernice. <laughs> Andrea, wow, well, it's amazing. It's like being in your living room. Mm -hmm. And Jody, love it, love it, love it. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start coloring all my images, okay? Um, and I should have had them colored beforehand, but RG fail. It was a busy weekend with Easter. I was Easter. like, do you want me to help you color some and cut some? Or I can do that. I do not while you're doing other stuff. Let me cut a few and then... Okay. I hope everybody had an amazing Easter weekend. Yeah, tell us, tell us, what did you guys do for Easter? For us here, we just kind of stayed home, obviously, and just do some little egg hunt in the backyard for the kiddos. I know. I was like, sorry, guys. The Easter Bunny is in quarantine. <laughs> so if you're lucky, you you may find some that you missed from last from year. From last year. Mm -hmm. And we did boil some eggs and have the kids at least get creative with some of the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure, did everybody get the marker list? Um, no, I don't believe so. Not it's for not these. Good. Not for these, but we I could add them on the down here on the description. And that way they can have them. So out of those of you who are here with me today, how many of you are like what's the first thing you would do oh it's 122 what's the first thing you would do if in fact once once this quarantine not if but once this quarantine is released like what's the one thing that you're not able to do that you would really want to do i mean i see an orange hmm? i see one of my oranges you mean you go get one or you go what would you Sorry. got So Andrea says your Easter was good, but she missed being with the whole family at her mom's. Uh, Martha Perry says, while he colors, I wanted to ask, did you say this digital file could be used with a Cricut? Yes, 100%. So all of our files, every single one of our digital files are come in PDF a come in an outline PDF, which is the one that I shared with you. So regular PDF, outline PDF, as well as an SVG. So I believe all of our Cricut users use an SVG. So it comes in an SVG, and that gives you the opportunity to use it um, in your Cricut. Let's see. Sacramento says, Quinn loved hiding and searching for eggs. 
so cute. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sure she had fun. Sally, very fun. Cindy, get my hair done. Uh, get my hair cut and colored. Then visit my son in South Carolina, Linda Gorman. Oh, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the hardest. That's been the hardest part probably in this entire um, delay or hold or... I guess, um, yeah, well, we're mm -hmm. just going to call it a delay or a hold because I feel like we're all in this holding pattern. Linda Hicks says, visit my mom at the nursing home. Oh, that's right, because they're all kind of shut down. Yep, and then Aurora Gomez, my hair and nails and toes, oh no. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm coming in and making my bread part nice and toasty. Now, we were supposed to have some conchas for you guys to view so you knew exactly what they were in the event that you weren't, although Carrie Urbush did a phenomenal job mm -hmm. at just coloring some of those. I'm not coloring. She making made, some making. Of those, yeah. She made homemade conchas. Like, what? <laughs> They are absolutely delicious. And you know why? Because they're not super sweet. And I'm not a big, big, huge, like, crazy psycho killer. If it's overly sweet, I can't have it. Or I, you know, I, I don't enjoy it as much. If it's just sweet enough. Um, and that's what that's what a concha is. Um, if they're done correctly, sometimes they're too dry or too if they've been there if they've been sitting there for a while they're so good when they're like nice and soft when they're brand and, freshly yeah, like baked fresh. they're nice and soft and they have a little bit of a cinnamon mm -hmm. flavor if they're done correctly um and it's just amazing cuz the top part is the top that has the sugar um and those little and I'm not sure how they do that to be honest I'm going to have to ask Carrie because I'm like how do they design? Does it just break on its own while it's baking, or how do they? I know design? I wondered the same thing, but I I think that that is how that happens. Once it bakes, it kind of breaks it. It kind of breaks it breaks it into different sections. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of like a sugary top, like a cookie, like a sugar cookie top. But not as heavy and thick as a sugar cookie. So it's super light and it breaks easy. What job do you have there? The 51? Mm hmm. Do we have Ben's mom on here? Mm, I don't see her. I don't know. I think I did miss this question. You asked them what did they miss doing? Yeah, Is what did they okay. miss? Like, what's the first thing they're going to want to do once? Oh, well, well, once we, yeah. Um, let's see, because we have Christine. She says, go visit my son and family on the other side of Michigan and spend time with our grandson, for sure. I think a lot of us missing out on family, family, especially yeah. families a little ways, too, you know. Um... Cindy Kurtz, uh, my son is in South Carolina. So her son's in Carolina. Bernice, visit all my friends. Um, I think Andrea said that too. I want to have friends over and have a dinner real life time <laughs> with loved ones, for sure. Not virtually. Yep. Martha says she wants to go to the bakery and get some conchas. <laughs> <laughs> They are pretty yummy if you find the right ones. We did have some here, actually. Um, and then somebody ate them. Somebody ate them. We don't, we're not saying any names. I'm not going to mention any names, <laughs> Gabby. Uh-huh. Richard. Richard. <laughs> Chelly. Chelly? <laughs> um, so, Adam, is the full file digital only or digital and stamp? Digital only, Adam. 
because I wasn't, I don't really know that I have a huge audience for this, to be honest, in 100% transparency. Um, if I thought I did, I would definitely would have launched in the stamps because I think it would be such a cute stamp. Um, but for now, it's just a digital only. Yeah, <laughs> most of my audience likes flowers and flowers and teacups and. Oh, Michelle Sadler says she would go to Guatemala and celebrate their her fortieth birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Happy Michelle. birthday! How's the hubby? How's the hubby doing? Michelle. That was for Michelle. Oh, how's Mr. Suckerman doing too? Like, is he actually going to work or is he oh, yeah. like working Or is he home? home or yeah. Valencia Brown says, hug my grandson and feel my other kick. He's due in June. Michelle says, hubby is working longer at home. So he's working from home. Well, that's good, though, that he's at home. I always worry about people who actually have to go to work because I feel like, gosh, that must be kind of scary. But they are healthy and safe, she says, Thank Michelle. Thank God. Mm -hmm. That's great. Sorry, guys, this is the longest part. <laughs> Bernice is asking if the cookies are really sweet. I've never had one. They're actually not cookies. It's, not a cookie. it's a bread. It's a bread. Mm -hmm. It's like um, what would be the good equivalent of a concha? Mm. I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> it's it's really yeah. It's really not a cookie. It's a bread. It's um. It's like a little loaf. It's like a mini, <laughs> tiny, tiny little. It's super. It's supposed to be super airy too. It's not like super thick like. Mm -hmm. It's just super, like... <laughs> I'm going to say an angel cake, no. No, no not no, at all. No, not at all. Um, gosh, it's like... Um, <laughs> it's just a pastry bread, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a super... Uh, super light. Like, it doesn't weigh anything. Uh, so it's not a cookie. It's so see how this one is kind of like chunky, like so it's like a bread, really. It depends. Sometimes they make them mini, so they're super tiny, um, and so. But it is like a, like a bread, and it's really, really, really soft. Like if you press it, you're going to flatten it, um, and the it's crispy on the outside, like the night, and then it's super soft on the inside. It sometimes has pretty chunky um, pieces of cinnamon, um, if done correctly, in my opinion. Uh, and so you can, they typically have different colors on the top. I actually don't know if the colors matter. I think they're just there for show, because um, they're always going to taste just like a sugar topper. But, some, you know, like you would hear the kids say, oh, I want a chocolate one, or I want a strawberry one. They're not. I don't think they're really strawberry or chocolate. I just think they're just a sugar cookie that happen to have a brown sugar cookie on top or pink sugar cookie on top or yellow. Sometimes it's orange. Sometimes it's green. It just depends. So I think it's just got some food coloring onto that sugar cookie. But, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I explained that well, but, um, yeah. The We're still talking about the concha. <laughs> yeah, I was telling them. They're so amazing with coffee, if you're a coffee lover. Did you see what they were saying or no? No. Okay, because I have, let's see. 
Christine was saying a biscotti or no, it's not a biscotti. No. Um, Andrea, like a bun? No. <laughs> Aurora, um, like a sweet roll. Carol says it's like a fluffy shortbread. Yeah. Mm, I guess like a fluffy shortbread, I guess. <laughs> okay, so you know how when you bite into a Hawaiian roll, uh-huh. inside that Hawaiian roll, is it's like super soft and squishy? Yeah. Like that. Kind of like Just that. Just a little bit drier than a Hawaiian roll. And sit, it's kind of like a... Me. Yeah. And sit, it's, and it's a little bit drier than a Hawaiian roll. Um... So the outside is kind of toasty because it's baked that way. Um, and and then the top part, like the pink and yellowish. that Is that sugar It's a sugar, topping. yeah. Which is super, super, not like a real sugar cookie, but super, super, like, delicate. Like, it could fall right <laughs> off the cookie. Oh, or yeah, right it's, a, it's a messy bread for sure. It's, it's a little bit of a messy bread, yeah. Because, you know, the, the top part starts flaking We have up Margie saying, hi, guys. How are things going? Happy belated Easter. Margie? Margie Sci- Sines? I can't pronounce hi, it. last name. <laughs> Happy belated Easter. All right, guys, I'm almost done with the coloring of my conchas. And then we're going to start making all the projects. So bear with me. Just let me know if you want me to help you cut. I want my plate to match my mug. Almost done, guys. Sorry. This always takes forever. We'd like to see you color, though. You're, co- mm-hmm. you're doing such an amazing job. See, Margie says, Mexican sweet bread, it's the best, especially with a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. for sure. Bernice, okay, we'll have to add to must-try list. <laughs> Thanks for the explanation. <laughs> Yeah, but don't like. Don't not all conchas are created equal. So my point to that is, if you don't happen to love it, don't don't not be willing to try it again, unless for whatever reason, like you don't like cinnamon or something. Well, then yeah, then that would <laughs> don't try it again. <laughs> um, but but yeah, it's not some of them. Some people don't make it right. Some of the bakeries are not legit. <laughs> it's true because sometimes you're like, oh, I can't wait to have a concha. And then you're like, mm, mm-hmm. It's not that great. That wasn't a concha. The ones we had the other day, they were actually pretty good. Yeah, like those were so good. The, how soft they were. Because sometimes when they are like dry and just they're yeah. like, eh, and they're not that great. And they're a little hard. Not hard, but they're just like My stiff. favorite are the cuernitos. Mm. Mm. That's a whole other explanation. That's a whole other <laughs> kind Mexican of bread. Mexican sweet bread is amazing. There is many different kinds of um, Mexican sweet bread. Because it's not like super psycho killer sweet. I guess that's why I think I like it. Maybe. Most. Alright. We are done. Done coloring. Look um, how beautiful that looks. I need to color one more because we're gonna create. Yeah, you want to cut those separate yeah, those for me? Um, we're gonna create the. I just need one of the hearts. So 
So the one you guys received for free, pretty much. So yeah, Aurora says, you must make sure you get them fresh from the real bakery and not pre-packaged ones. Yeah, yep. don't get pre-packaged ones. Get them fresh from the real bakery. If you want to really assess it, you ain't going to find really it at Walmart. Try it. <laughs> no. You got to go to a real Mexican bakery, Google it, <laughs> um, and then if you find it, it wants you, and when you walk into that bakery, it smells like heaven. <laughs> then definitely try those. And typically, uh, in the morning, they're going to be the freshest. When they're warm and soft, you'll know on but you'll know by how soft they are. If they feel super soft when you grab them with the with those thingies, the thongs, the thongs <laughs> then. Oh my gosh, that's it. Just bite them right there. Don't even, don't oh my even gosh. put paper. Just bite it. <laughs> and then paper. Oh wow. <laughs> so I go. I guess they couldn't wait. <laughs> what a nice coloring, babe. <laughs> Thanks. My grandma always said, las penas con pan son menos. Well, now you're going to have to translate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that translates to Spencer your words. worries yeah. with, um, with sweet bread or Mexican sweet bread, I guess, are less. <laughs> So this one, we are going to layer three pieces of cardstock because this, this is going to create our pin, okay? So hold on to that. Actually, what we want to do is let's go ahead and layer um, glue, liquid glue. Hey, Ruby. Ruby just joined Hi, us. Ruby. She said, I've been watching but went straight to YouTube and just found it on my phone so I can comment. You are on my TV. Yay! <laughs> it's kind of cool. Everybody's watching us on TV. <laughs> I always wanted to make it to television. There you go. <laughs> I guess now we have. Ruby says she's buying the digital. She wishes it was a stamp. I know. Me too, Ruby. But it would just be for you and me. Nobody else will buy it. My sister, Bernice, my sister's going to get me one from our local carniceria store. Yeah, they will have it too. Mm -hmm. Martha, the page you are, the page you are cutting from is that one we get in the download. Oh, not the free download, not free download. but yes, the other one. But, well, yeah, actually, just kidding. So, you do get it in the download. So it's here. Oh, yes. So you just want to cut that strip. This is the one you get in the download. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sorry, my bad. But when they do purchase this, they get the other. Oh, yeah. This is the one you get if you purchase the full download if you're interested in that. It is also available at, call, at cheap. At cheap? At at cheap. <laughs> it's on sale. It's on it's promotion. It's on sale this week because of the class. So typically it's um, $17.99 for our regular digi files, it's our full 15, digi files. $15.99. $15.99. But this it's one's $9.99 nine, yep. this week only. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, so we're just gonna let that sit for a quick second so that the glue dries a little bit. You're gonna keep cutting or cut these for you. So we wanna cut out all of our sentiments. From my corazón to yours is a nice, fun one. Oh, hey, Patricia. She's on here now, Ben's hey. mom. <laughs> I was wondering about you, Ben's mom. I was like, where's she at? Where's she at? Yes, he, RG has been asking about you. <laughs> 
Um, got Linda here. Um, where's Patricia? Aurora Gomez says that she would buy it too. <laughs> the stamp. I know. Okay, well, that's three of us. <laughs> Great. Great. It's so cute. We need a lot more. <laughs> So we're just cutting out all of our images. How do you want these cut out? Like just squares? Just like this, yep. Yeah. Now again, if you're not um, using this file uh, and you're just gonna use whatever stamps that you like, make sure you go ahead and stamp those and have them ready to include onto our projects. I know Ben's mom already has, probably. She's ready. Or she might have already finished the projects altogether, <laughs> who knows. But we appreciate that she's here with us anyway. <laughs> I was planning a surprise for some friends. We we're going to have a Zoom painting party. Cool, Patricia. That sounds That's like cool. fun. Did you see the service, CCV service this weekend? It was so nice. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's just Zooming. <laughs> zooming through life <laughs> right now. Uh, but you just said I found a recipe for a gluten free sugar free concha no really uh, Carol says I like these sentiments uh, a lot of straight cuts oh yeah <laughs> wait um, Ben's mom Patricia have you actually had a concha before like a regular one before you were you know gluten before you identified yourself as a glutener a glutener <laughs> <laughs> she said, LOL, oh, you're so funny, Richard. <laughs> um, I did see the CCV service. I love the sunrise service. Yeah, it was so pretty. Oh my gosh, our sunset yesterday was oh like amazing. Oh my gosh, amazing. you guys should have seen that sunset. It was crazy. It was like picture perfect. I'm like, like, I want to just cry out here for a minute. Mm -hmm. It was like un unreal, right? It was so pretty. Is it? Do you want me to cut like? Yeah. Okay. Now this is the one that had the layers of glue. You always want to cut these guys out while the glue's still wet because if not, it gets too difficult to cut once if it's dry. Forget it. It's too many layers of cardstock. But while the glue's wet, it softens up your cardstock. And now I have three layers of cardstock that I can shape and mold if I wanted to. So um, while that glue is still wet, it allows me to come in here and just mold my paper so that it gives it add, added dimension, okay? So just shape it and mold it and then let it sit the way you shaped it and mold it. If you need to go back and do it again, then like if it starts to flatten out because it's the paper wants to kind of adjust itself, just come back and mold it again while the glue is still semi-wet. Okay, so just let it let it do its thing. We've got these many pieces, and Miss G's over here helping me cut these ones, which we're, we're gonna need for our live. How are we doing, guys? Are we ready for? some action here with all of our paper folds and our cuts. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andrea, sounds fun. Patricia, can't wait to see what you create. 
Ruby, Patricia, you can't do the yuck. No sugar free. <laughs> wow, Ruby. <laughs> um, sugar free. I need that recipe. Never heard of, of one before till this week. Wow, Patricia, she's never heard of the concha until this week that we've been talking about it, and she researched it and found a recipe for gluten free. It's cool. Listos? Are we ready? That means ready? Listos? Listas? You guys ready? That's okay. kind of what that means. This is going to be turning into a Spanish lesson. <laughs> Since we're Están doing conchas. Están listos? Are you ready? Well, we do have a lot of Spanish speaking. Well, I mean, we do have some Spanish speaking. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the easiest project first. Um, and that's going to be our regular card. Okay, so this is going to be the simplest. Um, and we can go ahead and create that. I'm going to use a couple of different dies for my projects. I'm going to use my circles and I'm going to use my my scalloped bloom. So it's really a scallop circles. Okay. So I'm going to head and grab this scallop. Yep. And this scallop. Because those are going to be my layers for this particular project. I'm also going to grab some of the scraps of my powdered sugar. So I can create these cuts. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my big shot. Now we're going to run these two scallop circles through the big shot. So these are the two pieces that I need for this particular uh, project. I'm going to go ahead and run another scallop, the smaller circle that I used. Uh, for my other project. So I just kind of want to get that one out of the way so I can put that die set away. Hey Donna, Ms. Donna Blatz just hey joined Donna. us. Hey Donna! Where have you been? I think you were the only one missing. We had Linda on here, Patricia finally made it. And you are the only one that was missing. That's usually here. We already had Suckerman on here. It's Ruby. Ruby finally made it. <laughs> well, she was watching, but she, she was, wasn't. She wasn't able to comment. She wasn't yeah. able to comment. So she's she's got it together now. <laughs> All right. So we can put this dice set away, or whatever you're using. Okay. So remember. Because we're doing these live and we might have some brand new crafters, we're kind of cutting everything from scratch. So I have an eight and a half by 11 piece of Sweet King cardstock. And I want to cut this at four and one fourths to create my card base. Check. Now I want to turn this over and I'm going to cut this at five inches. Then three and three fourths. This creates the card layer that I want for my project. I'm going to go ahead and bring my score tool to just score my card base. Donna's hubby was on the computer, Ella. Well, what is he thinking? <laughs> so I'm guessing now she took over. <laughs> Doesn't he know we have a regular date? <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so we've got our card base and we have our card layer. So those are the only two layers that we have for this particular card. I'm going to grab one of my largest blocks uh, because I'm going to use the artisan tile background. Now this one's an oldie but a goodie. Oh, cool. They finally, wow, oh, Andrea, she finally got her um, card club kit. 
She's like, well, I meant today? to. Today? Sh- no, she said she got out Saturday. She meant to share it. I got her sweet colors and her club kit on Saturday. So wow. she meant to share it, but you know, she kind of forgot. She's sharing now. <laughs> what do you mean? The white? I grabbed my powdered sugar. Mm, bad. Oh, that's not it? So I'm going to grab my powdered sugar ink pad. And, of course, you can use any pigment ink that you have. I would prefer a white or a cream um, because it's on a darker cardstock. Oh, Linda Gorman saying she hasn't received hers. Hmm. What? I'm going to have to look into that. You should have received it by now. Fine. I'll come drop it off myself. <laughs> Sorry about that, Linda. So crazy. Alrighty. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this across the page and just press on, okay? Wow, they're really behind on delivering these packages. Donna hasn't received it. Patricia says she got hers today. Wow. Beautiful, um, but unfortunately, I don't want it to stay beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to take it to the next step. I wanted to <laughs> be a little bit more distressed than that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna use whatever I just used to wipe this to kind of come and cover my edges, and I'm gonna bleed. Linda that says, end. if you're going to come to Ohio, bring a coat. <laughs> Snow flurries this week. Wow. No way. It's like super cold. I was cold this morning because it was 60 degrees here. <laughs> Let me grab a little bit more ink. And I just want to blend in those edges. And I'm also going to blend in the rest of my spread here. Because it's pigment ink, it allows me to move it just a little bit, just enough to create a cool background for my project. Like a very faint background, isn't that cool? Super cool. Ruby says it's cold in LA too. What? What? That's not good. We need it to heat up. So this virus can stop growing. Mm -hmm. So the state of Arizona launched a... um, an update on the zip codes that are affected by um, the virus. And I'm happy to report we're not one of them. Not yet, anyway. Can you? No. I just want to heat it up a little bit to dry it off. But I love it. I love the background. You can still see the artisan tile, but it, it just smooths it all together for a cool uh, look. is when in doubt. Pop it out. Pop it out. We're going to go ahead and pop out our scallop circles. We want the smaller one up here. one down at the 
bottom. Let's go ahead and snip off the excess to both of those. And we're going to start here with let your conchas be your guide. Of course, you're going to use any sentiment that you prefer. But I'm going to bring this guy in here. Wow, they are cold in uh, Cali. Andrea says, my heater just kicked back on. Wow. Aurora says, it's there are 63 degrees in Northern California. Uh, Andrea, she says, good thing you canceled spring fling. We would have brought it the virus here <laughs> yeah can you imagine it's so crazy huh how when we go back to those days i'm like what just happened <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna bring the let your conchas be your guide so cute right on the top here uh, actually bring it down a little bit lower check and I'm going to layer some of my conchas. So I've got my big, beautiful um, yellow concha. Now, again, if you're using blooms for this, then, of course, you're just going to layer them accordingly. I don't want to cut off the heart just yet. Let me just kind of see. I think it fits fine. No, I'll cut it off. I do like my cards to be flush with my layers. All right. So when in doubt, pop it out. We're gonna pop this guy out one more time. We're going to grab some twine. I'm going to stretch this guy out. And we're going to do a double bow. It was a little bit cooler this morning when we went out for a walk. I'm trying to get my kids to stay active and my family to stay active. While we're here, they're not doing PE anymore, of course. They're not doing any of those things at school anymore. And so I want to mm -hmm. kind of push them to stay physically active. And the best way to do that is, of course, if we participate as a family. Um, and so that's kind of what we've been doing uh, every day. We just go for a walk. Uh, and it's nice. It's good prayer time. It's just self-reflection time, I think. I love it. It gets the body moving. and gets the body functioning correctly. But here we go. Let your conchas be your guide. Project one. Oh, Remember, so we're going to splatter and bedazzle at the end with our dazzling pat. Um, but I love the background for this. It's just so, so perfect. Hmm. Gail said, how come the noise in the table is so loud, but Richard's voice is soft? Is, Am I not speaking loud enough, guys? <laughs> is this a new mic? It is a new mic. Yes, we are using a new mic. A different mic, for sure. Um, because the other one sounded a little fun tunnely. So let me know if I'm not if I'm speaking too if I'm rocking you to sleep. Then for sure, let me know. 
And, oh. and it's sitting on the table, so maybe I mean, that's why you I can hear. hear you through my um, earphones, things that I'm, and I hear you fine, but it might be a little different for them. I don't know. Yeah, let me know. Let me know if it's something we need to adjust. All right, so we've got our first project done. Now we're going to jump over to our long card. Um, and it's just a little different. I decided to make it longer than what we've normally done our long card. So come check on your 3D piece. See how it's already drawing in that shape? So it has some of that texture. Let's just let it keep drying. There's no need to do anything. Let it just dry all the way. And then we'll come back to that at the very end. Um, let's go ahead and go to our long card. Our long cards are typically... Um, seven by eight and a half, if you remember correctly, right? We would normally cut here to create our long card. Well, I wanted enough space for my sweet notes to fit, so I needed to be a little bit longer. I went ahead and went all the way to nine inches here. Let me see. Make sure I got this right. That is correct. I went all the way to nine inches. So that means that we have to cut it this way at nine first. So you're gonna come horizontal and cut it at nine inches. Now we're gonna need this to be, it's still the same size of three and a half and three and a half. So now this one needs to be by seven, okay? So that's exactly the same. It's three and a half and three and a half, which makes it um, seven inches by nine inches. That is the only difference here in this new card layout. It still fits in your legal size envelope, but the reason why is I wanted there to be enough space. I didn't want my cards to feel so scrunched up, but you are welcome to make them tighter. I just wanted there to be enough of a hold on each side so that I don't have to cut my slit all the way through, because remember, these cards all come off. Um, this is really just like a sleeve for your sweet notes. And I just love, if you missed the beginning part of this um, class, then go back and rewatch the beginning on the various different ideas on how to use these, this particular um, technique, if you will. We're going to score it at three and a half. Gail, by the way, thank you so much for the beautiful card you send us and the baggies. They actually arrived on Saturday. Oh, yes. Thank you so, so much right for in that. Time for mm -hmm. Easter, we got your Easter card. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know. We are using a new mic because uh, I know Patricia's saying that it sounds fine. We sound fine to her. Um, Patricia, I don't think that's it. The paper cutter is loud. So I don't know because the mic is on the table now. Yeah, I think that's the reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our little bit longer card than we used to. Um, it's nine inches long now but still by three and a half. Um, and what we want to do here is we're actually going to seal off the edges, but before we do that, we want to create a slit, which is where our cut is going to go. So we're going to bring in our paper trimmer. We're going to bring in the, the one layer. doesn't matter which one it is right now. We're going to bring this to a half an inch. Um, and you're going to cut right at a half an inch, okay? Now you also want to leave a half of an inch slit on each side. So you, if your paper trimmer has a ruler on the inside of your 
um, blade, then you're going to want to go to a half an inch, and right before you get to a half an inch over here, you'll stop that blade. So you'll no notice how your paper trimmer typically has a little indicator right there. That's where your blade is actually at. And so when we look at your ruler, you're going to want to come to half an inch. All paper trimmers really do have this, unless, of course, it's a guillotine, which is a little bit different. Um, but if you have a regular paper trimmer like this, then you should have a ruler on here. And then your paper cutter should have a little arrow indicating where the blade is actually at. So we're going to bring this to a half an inch, which is right about there. And we're going to cut a slit all the way until we get to a half an inch down here. So not all the way through, we just want that slit. You see it? So you should have a half an inch border all the way around. Yes? Now what we want to do is we want to go in here and we're going to seal the deal. We're going to seal all around the edges. With either some score tape, red liner, or whatever you prefer to use, we're going to go ahead and seal that off. Then we want to seal our card shut. This gives it the thickness that it needs, the stability that it needs for you to be able to bring your cards once they are done. And check it out. You have three spots for three beautiful cards check so cute the little cards are really cute little notes right so adorable mm -hmm. all right now it's time we're going to add a little bit of extra to this we're going to grab a piece of our sweet pink which I actually didn't bring, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, while Miss G's helping me gather that, we're gonna create our sweet notes. The sweet notes are a very different size. They're about two and a half by five inches. So they're two and a half square cards. So what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and cut these guys. Um, let's see if these are at five, nope. So we wanna bring this to five. And two and a half. Five. Just because I'm using scraps that I have left over. And we're going to need one more sweet note. They're basically two and a half inch square cards. Perfect, we need three of those little cards. Now we want an inside layer of sweet blue. So let me grab some scraps of these. And we're gonna go here to two and one fourth. And we need three of these. Three of those. Um, I need a nine inch 
by let's say two and a half inch piece of sweet pink that I'm gonna layer right onto my card. Kind of reminds me of that ice cream. Ice cream. That Napoleon ice cream. Mm. I am just going to add um, and I'm going to place it right under oopsie. I'm going to place it right under that cut line okay it's almost like a little guide to where the cut line is. So you got three and a half, you got that strip right down the center, and it also strengthens that so that it never tears. Like, you know, if you've got people playing with it, then they're just yanking on that. It might tear that very, very fine cut. But by adding that additional piece of cardstock, then it's just a perfect fit. And it just adds so much more texture to your project. Cute, huh? Super cute. All right. So we want to go ahead and score all of our little cards, sweet notes, in half at the two and a half inch mark. It's best if you score front and back. It'll make it a lot easier, especially if you're using our cardstock. Our cardstock is so thick at 100 pounds cover. Um, it's just perfect for all kinds of projects, but it sometimes needs a little extra love and attention because it's so thick. crease in there Perfect. So we have our three sweet notes and we have our three layers. And using the same background stamp, I'm going to go ahead and stamp using some sweet blue ink. So direct to paper, sweet blue onto sweet blue cardstock. I'm not even going to put it on a block. Sorry, is that too loud? Probably less loud because it's on the table. Beautiful. Hi, Rosebud. I love this background stamp. I 
going to go ahead and layer these direct. Perfect. We have our three sweet notes. Now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and add our yummy conchas to this. Oh, so good. We do have that additional scallop circle that we had cut out. So let's go ahead and when in doubt, pop it out. Pop, start popping these guys out. Beautiful. Um, and of course, we just got to add our sentiment to this, which I'm going to trim down just a little bit more. Okay. You can't please everyone. You're not a concha. Thank you. Just thought it was fun and fun to be able to share. You know what? I'm actually going to send one of these to my mom. Except for she won't be able to read it because she doesn't read English, but... I'm sure I'll find a Spanish one in here. She'll be she'll be like, oh, conchas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll love it. So sure. cute. All right. So if you wanted to add finishing elements like ribbon or something like that, now would be the time to do that. The original one has some twine. I mean, some seam binding in Rose pink. Rose Buzz asking, are you using post-it notes? No, these are actually sweet cards that I created from cardstock. Um, so I cut out my cardstock five by two and a half inches, and then I just scored it in half to create my little my little cards. Because we're, what we're making is we're making this beautiful card piece where you can put your little love, your sweet notes in here. And look at that. You can fit three sweet notes Super cute. into your sleeve. And you've got all your little cards here for someone special. The first card we make, uh, we made um, Rosebud was this beautiful card featuring our conchas and our sentiment. And then the next card we're making, guys, if you're just now tuning in, is going to be the peekaboo card that allows you to open the open and close these. Okay. Like to know what papers are on sale this week. This week, oh, that's right, we haven't posted them. I believe is our sours or our rich tones. I'm not Lovely sure. Life. I have to check it out. All right, so I'm gonna use twine instead of the seam binding for this one in case you want a little different look. So 
I am just going to wrap my twine a couple of times. I love the use of twine, too. It's like my favorite. That's our sours. It's our sours. Sours are on sale this week. So double knot, and then I'm just going to add a bow. Or if you wanted to add no bow, let me just add no bow here. I'm just going to create a little snip on each side just so that I can show the thread. Because what's so great about not adding a bow is that you can tuck your twine and it holds your sweet notes in place. And that way your bow is not, and it's not necessary either. So it just lets you come in here at your, your twine as that little holder right underneath. Check it out. It holds it so it's easy to mail. Uh, and then when somebody needs to pull out the card, they just pull out the card. So cute, guys. So whichever way you prefer to go, with your bow, ribbon, um, or you can use the twine as a fastener, and it's just fascinating. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Payaso. All right, we've got two projects done. We're going to jump onto our crazy peekaboo card. Um, okay, so we also have this one here that's pretty dry now. So if we want to jump real quick on this one, we're going to add a layer of a Sharpie, black Sharpie, on the outside end. It's not necessary. If you want to leave it white, go ahead and leave it white. I personally think that it leaves it looking more finished. But that is not mandatory. Nothing is mandatory, but we are going to go ahead and add our black Sharpie to our edges. What you're basically doing is you're covering the edges to not have all the layers of white cardstock. Now, that only matters is if you're really going to add it to like a pin that someone's going to wear, or maybe if you're going to make this into earrings. Um, because I'm also not, I don't have a black layer of black cardstock in the back. But do you see how it just looks more intense, more finished than the white version? I just love that look. And I think that if I had a black, so on my original ones, I have black, black cardstock in the back. Um, but because these are going to be close pin toppers, um, it really won't matter. It won't matter if you if it's, the back is white or not. So cute. But I love the texture that we have from the dried up glue and the paper. They're always fun. I love those. I love to make those. Well, you're on the third card and I'm still coloring. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> I know, because some of you guys love to color. Take your time. They like to take their time to color. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of takes time, too, because when you're trying to pick your colors, like, hmm, what color should I color this one? Should I do I want this color, that color? <laughs> that takes a little bit of time, too. Right. But Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to go grab something from my craft room. Oh, really? <laughs> All right. Well, since RG decided to go get something from the craft room, <laughs> uh, he will come back. Uh, let's see. Adam, I see that you're loving these. I know. Aren't these so cute? These cards, they're so, so fun. So if you guys are just tuning in, he just created this 
long card here with these little mini note cards. Super cute. Check this out. You can write little notes on there. How cute is that? Thanks, Gil. I'm glad that you're liking that we're teaching, well, RG is really teaching different um, ways of doing cards and techniques. It's always fun to, to see all the creation that he does. Super fun. He also created this lovely card. It was his very first card that he did today. Hmm. You're back. I'm back. <laughs> Okay, I'm just showing our viewers. Confession. I went to go get a little wow. cake. Oh, you got that from the craft room. <laughs> mm -hmm. Adam said that he's loving this, and you didn't get to hear me say that. And Miss Gail, she's loving um, the you teaching all the different kinds of cards and techniques and stuff. So always super fun. All right, fam. Let's get this show on the road. Oh, Ben says hi, Richard. Ben! <laughs> we need to do a, a, a virtual class together. How does one do that? You have to do the Zoom. Maybe what <laughs> I'll do is I'll have him color my images. It, it'll be a progressive class. <laughs> hey, these are colored by Ben. <laughs> Or he can be my concept guy. He's got quite a few great concepts. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a Sweet King cardstock. And we're going to do a regular gate fold card, okay? So what I mean by that is we are going to cut this piece at five and a half inches like you would. So for example, if you have an eight and a half by 11, you're just gonna cut this in half at five and a half and you have two cards, two card bases. That's pretty much the norm for an A2 size card. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch this over to my paper trimmer and I am actually going to score this at two and one eighth on each side. I went to the craft room mm -hmm. and I caught Shell. What was she doing? She was stamping on her own. What? Mm -hmm. She's like, I got this. Mm -hmm. Is she getting ready for tomorrow's live then? I don't know. <laughs> she might. <laughs> Patricia said that he would love that then. All right, guys. So we want one of these regular gate folds. Okay, so it's just a five and a half. We scored at two and one eighths and at two and one eighths again um, to get us that exact fold in the middle. Okay? Super simple. Um, all right, now it's where it gets tricky because we want to create our inside layer. Now, how many of you, raise your hand, if you've created one of these peekaboo cards before? Yeah. Okay? Let me know. I'm sure there's like proper instructions somewhere out there in the world, but I'm not an instructions kind of guy. I like to figure things out on my own and I prefer it that way mainly because um, then I like to teach it. So All right, we're gonna grab a piece of our sour mist. So Linda says she has, she has made that. I'm assuming Michelle also saying 
that she's made it. She Perfect. put a one, so I'm assuming that means me. One? I don't know. Um, Carmen, hey, thanks for hey, joining Carmen. us. She says, happy Monday. I'm late, so sorry. My coffee needs coffee today. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right, guys. So I've tried this in different measurements. I don't know if there's real, actual measurements out there in the world. I've not bothered to look. Um, so I've just played with my own measurements. Um, so I'm going to go in at three and one fourth by six inches. Okay. Those are the measurements that were my favorite that worked best for me. I then want to score at half an inch on either, on both sides of this. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to score at half an inch and half an inch. These are going to be the little flaps. Remember to score on both sides if you're using our paper. So again, if you already know, if you've already done these and you have a, someone's measurements that you love, go with what you love. I love to create it myself because I am always looking for the easiest way to do it for me. <laughs> um, and hopefully that becomes the easiest way to do it for you, but that's not always the case. Um, so again, one a half an inch on each side and then this particular piece was at three and one fourth and this is what's going to fit inside my card okay so we obviously adhere these two ends down and that's where we place our piece now what we want to do is let me grab some of my powdered sugar cardstock because I want to create a small uh, layer on the inside here. And this one I'm going to cut out three inches by, let's say, five. I don't need the whole piece. This one will technically be attached to the bottom flap of this, which is where I'm going to either stamp my image that's going to be peekabooed or I'm going to place my digi file on. This, this gets a little tricky because the digi file tends to be a little bit raised, uh, mainly because it is a digi file. But if you had a stamp, it would work out so much better. All right, so we've got this. We're gonna bring in our big shot. And we want to cut out that window view. And I'm going to go ahead and go with a little bit smaller window than my original. Uh, because I want to go ahead and add the piercing element to the outside of my circle. So I've got this. Oh, I needed that tape. I can just use a. Well, not that one, but I like just to hold my dice in place. I was gonna bring some of that purple tape. Oh, let me go get it real quick. Perfect. Yeah, I just don't want it to move. All right. So we're gonna place a circle and a piercing element. right here um, and of course you're going to use whatever you can use a circle punch if you want just a regular circle punch you can use um, a hexi die too if you'd like just make sure that it doesn't um, overpower your your peekaboo cards oh my gosh so Carmen just ask, asked do, do you use your scraps okay so clearly Carmen you're a little bit new to me and you haven't been around enough to know that I am a scrap um, psycho killer um, and I don't like my scraps to be thrown away because I do use my scraps 
Um, not as much as the people around me would want me to use because I freak out if my scrap drawer gets organized and emptied because then I feel like there was a lot of good stuff that was thrown away. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes we do have a lot of like small pieces that it's like... Yeah, but I want I everything. Throw. I know, but I do throw those away because it's like, okay, that's too many. I mean... And I feel sad too. Like, oh, we could totally use these, but yeah, we yeah, it's too much. I use them. I don't. I don't like to get rid of those. I don't like to get rid of anything. Well, you can't get rid of the circles because you could always use that. So. Yeah. All right. So we've got our circle window here. Perfect. Again, make sure that that crease tool, that that crease is nice and firm, because if not, it's gonna wanna pop out your, your image. Um, and then we've got the smaller piece here, and I recommend that um, first you come back and you adhere this, so you know exactly where it goes. Now again, I am teaching you my way, and the way that I know it, but if you've already learned it somewhere else differently, whatever is going to be easiest for you. Mr. Karma says, that's awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I say even the tiny pieces. I know. It's a thing. We have an issue, I think. We're, we just love paper because we feel like we could make something out of it. Oh, I can use that. <laughs> All right. So clearly I'm being distracted because this one doesn't have to come up yet. Okay. So just the, just the top part is the one that I want to seal down. And you just kind of place that right in the center. You can measure if you want to go psycho killer, but I don't. I'm just going to wing it. Perfect. Now that that one is down, I can come back and add my powdered sugar sugar layer of cardstock. Right in the center. And it's a little bit longer than I need it should have trimmed it down just a little bit. So let's trim this down just a hair, about a half an inch. So he is three inches by four and three fourths. Okay, so that way this, it hides it at the bottom. So three inches by four and three fourths, we have that space. Now what we need to do is we need to add our image right to the inside of that circle. So go ahead and adhere it, making sure, especially because it's a digi file, that you have adhesive on all of your sides. We don't want it to get caught in our piggy boo window, but if it does get caught, I'm gonna show you how to get it to not be caught because my original one was getting caught and I figured out how to not do that. Wow, Joe. Joe just joined us said, what have I missed? A lot. Wow. <laughs> wow, Joe. Ya pa qué? Ya pa qué? All right. So there we have our concha is sitting right in the center. Of course, if you're not using this set, you can use anything you prefer. Now it's time for us to create our peekaboo window slides, okay? I have mine at three and a half by three inches. I need to bring in my paper trimmer. I need two three and a half by three inches pieces of powdered sugar. Three and a half. By 
my three inches. So these are gonna be our little peekaboo slides. And we are gonna score them at one fourth of an inch, which is pretty much the size of my adhesive. One fourth of an inch. Now, some people really have a hard time with the, and then of course I adhere these to the outside flaps. Okay. So that when it closes, it does that. So one of the things that I like to do is once it's in the center, and I like to center it this way, I just like to add like a little dot here, kind of where I want this. And I'm just kind of picking the center of those spaces, okay? So if I remove this, I bring this over, that's my center. Um, so once I've added that pencil mark, I really just go with my scissors and I snip to that point from corner to point. From corner to point. Same thing with the other side. That's so cool. Carmen says, I always love the colors you use together. How do you know what colors complement each other? Well, I think that's just been because I've been doing this for 25 years, and I I think it's one of the things that I'm... You already have an eye for. I have an eye for. <laughs> like, I love playing with all my colors, and I have an idea of what I want to use and which color combos I want to play with. Like, this one's going to have a little piece. Like, see, if I add the orange, the, this um, tangy orange with Sour Mist together are beautiful. Like, they just scream out like summer and spring and I live it. All right, so we've got our little, now we're gonna add our adhesive to this. Put, and I just love playing with color in general. Sometimes what helps is if you create a little notch on the ends like that. It really helps so that it doesn't like stick out or get weird looking. It also surprisingly helps it with movement a little bit. But sometimes, you know, the paper needs to get played around with a little bit to soften up. But it is helpful. All right, so we want it to be right in the inside of that mark. Right above, a little bit higher than that. You can kind of see just right above your score line. You don't want it to be right on the crease. You want it to be right above that score line and then come back and press that so that when it opens and closes, it's getting that movement. You see that? And I just think it's super easy. Have you guys done it differently or exactly the same way?
little notch, little notch. Alrighty. Same thing on this side. We want to match it up a little bit with our other side over here right on the outside skirts of that crease. Perfect. And then we have that. So nice, sealed, great. What I also love to do is I do like to come in here and just kind of curl my edges up a little bit. This helps it prevent it from getting stuck especially because I didn't stamp this image on the bottom. It's been, all right, so again, if I have this holding down, it's closed, and then I open my card, and there's my peekaboo. So let me, I may have to make these smaller because I went with a smaller hole this time. So let me go ahead, and I'm gonna close this guy up. And I need to cut, I need to create my crease all the way up to here, okay? Super simple for me to fix. And I'm just gonna come up to that mark. And then this says you made it much easier to understand. Good, I'm hoping, because I'm not the guy who's gonna ever read instructions, which is the worst teacher in the world. <laughs> um, but. It's kind of you look at it or something, or you're just kind of doing it on your own. Yeah, because like. I, so okay, so now that this is down, you can see the full concha. Do you see how we did that? Wow. Super easy to fix. It's so like, smart. It's like the easiest thing in the world to fix. All right. So now that that's there, we can adhere this bottom part. But if you wanted to add a strip, you can add that strip now or you can add it later, whichever you prefer. Let's make sure we don't get caught here. I'll be back. So again, you've got this super cute, easy peasy peekaboo card. I wish I can keep it. Look how good that is, right? And it just closes perfectly, and it opens perfectly, and it closes perfectly, and it opens perfectly. And again, I just think it's so much easier that sometimes instructions make it so complicated when you can just easy peasy, you know, I just like to figure it out on my own. <laughs> All right. So again, you can now add a little layer of paper to this um, just to create the extra funsy to it. Uh, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna guesstimate that I'm gonna bring, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna bring in just a little strip of orange, okay? And we decided that that was three and one fourths. Perfect. So this particular small piece is one and a half by three and one fourths. And I'm gonna follow that with a piece of powdered sugar. Three and one fourth by one and one fourth. Cause that's gonna be the perfect layer on there. Now you can really add any sentiment you prefer to that mix. I'm gonna choose, let me see where's my sentiments. Nothing a cup of coffee and a concha can't fix. So cute. So let's go ahead and add all those layers together. Now you don't wanna pop anything out because it's on the inside of your card. and you want it to kind of lay pretty flat, flat. We 
We should have a whole class just on peekaboo cards. What do you guys think? That would be fun, huh? To see what we can all, like the different types of peekaboo cards. Tell me if you want that. Maybe we can make that Wednesday, next Wednesday. I mean, next Monday. I'm actually gonna cut another one because that one has a little bit of a stain from the ink pad that I don't want. I think the peekaboo's cards are fun. I just think maybe sometimes they might be overwhelming for people. But you saw me. I What I love to do is I love to create on the spot because I always feel like, hey, you know, one of the best things to do is to just kind of share what some of our challenges might be as crafters within our space. Like, oh, that sometimes doesn't work, but we fix it this way or that way or this is how I choose my colors, or this is how I choose my ribbons, or, you know, things like that. All right, so nothing a cup of coffee and a concha can fix because we still have to create the outside part, which is our little belly band. So, okay, so it's gonna look like this. Oh, yay, it closes, and you're like, from my corazón to yours, and then you open this, you've got your coffee there, and Nothing a cup of coffee and a concha so cannot fix, can't fix. So I love it. I think it's so smooth and I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so let's go ahead and create our belly band. If you guys are still with me. And our belly band is one and a half inches long. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it at one and a half inches. Um, and this one's kind of simple to do the belly band itself. Because I'm going to bring it into my paper trimmer. And the way that I like to first start the belly band off is um, I basically score, let's say, at two inches. Okay. Now I'm going to fold that score. Crease it. I'm gonna come back and then I'm I'm gonna come to four and one fourth, which is the size of the card on its own. Um, and then that ultimately gives me my belly band. Now some people like to go a little bit wider than that because it ends up being too tight, um, and that's okay. So whichever one you decide. I don't tighten it all the way, so I like it to be pretty flush. But when I add this other part, so this one just gets trimmed off. And I like to trim it off at an angle just for, to, for texture. Um, but I like to give it, I don't like to make it super flat and flush. I like to give it a little bit of give um, so that it just becomes, you know, easier to come in and out. Okay. So we got that. We're going to come back, turn it around this way. And we're going to go ahead and adhere that with some tape. Now, another way you could do it too, I'm going to cut another one. Okay. If you struggle with it and you really want it to be flush, then go ahead, go to two inches. Again, start it at two inches. That kind of becomes your little turning point. You know your card is at four and one fourth. So just come in a little bit more. Just one over and then you can go ahead and adhere to flush. But I still recommend that you cut it at an angle. It just looks, I think, more interesting. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and add some tape to that. Are you guys still with me? Did I lose some of you? I 
I still left it a little bit loose so that when we bring in our card, it's not as tight. Okay. And if you want it to be even more loose, you can just decide where you want to create your score line. Now that it's on here, we're going to grab some twine because I love to have that extra little level of finish yes, look. Yes, still here. We're still here. Thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you have found these helpful. We're really just doing it um, in hopes that people find a little bit of a creative edge. Um, and have something to, yeah, look forward to. We, we typically host a regular card club. We have a card club subscription, um, that we host. And this is kind of what happens during our card club subscriptions, but we create four cards. Um, and we kind of wanted to give you guys a taste of what that's like for us every month. But having, doing these every Monday has been really cool. I think we've met some new people on here. Some people who maybe have been around for a while, but have not been around in a while. Mm -hmm. Have been around for a while, but have not been around in a while. Or probably didn't have the... Um, or yeah, just like you guys were busy with work working, yeah. or with whatever was going on. And so now you're now a little bit more stationed at home for a moment. Mm -hmm. So again, we're hoping that it's bringing you some inspiration, some joy. Uh, it's always fun to for us to be able to do this. And so thanks again for being a part of it with us. We absolutely appreciate your time and your willingness to come create with us. I'm going to cut out my circle. And I'm going to go ahead and use the piercing element for it as well so that it matches the inside. And then I'm going to cut out my circle in white as well, or powdered sugar, I guess I should say. I'm just going to grab a little piece of tape. And I also love this color palette. I think Carmen's so right. It's just such a fun, playful palette. And that always makes a huge difference, I think, in projects, right? I mean, obviously, it depends on your um, theme or your motive or who you're sending a card to or what's the occasion. But I just love to choose something that's going to make me happy. And this most certainly does. So we're going to remove that. And that. And then this guy will fit right inside while showcasing the scalloped, I mean the pierced elements. See that? Almost done, guys. Have I kept you too long today? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adhere these guys down flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in with a three-fourths of an inch punch and I'm going to create a little notch. Ooh. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a little notch. And I want to grab my coffee mug. When in doubt, pop it out. Pop it out. We're going to pop this guy right out. We're gonna add our coffee mug right in here. I didn't get the link for the card club video or digital page link. 
Linda, Linda, um, I just emailed you, so you might want to check your email. You should have that on there. Um, let's see, Carmen. No way. Love your classes. I can't take another episode of Tiger King. LOL. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that show. We heard so many things about it, and we kind of looked into it. And we're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, about why that. are people watching why that? Why are they watching <laughs> it? We're like, yeah, he passed. <laughs> All right. So the little notch is to fit where my bow is. Okay. See how it just kind of cuddles it, coddles it. I guess that's the right word, right? It just kind of coddles it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out my circles and it just adds a little fun element to highlight my bow while at the same time highlight the whole project and again you just slide that sky off the little belly band and ta-da so adorable now I did ask you guys a question if you guys want to see more of these peekaboo cards or not that's okay we can create something else but um, you know I'm just trying to make sure that sometimes you don't learn it on the first time it takes a few a few of them to get like ah, I am now a, a peekaboo card expert I peekaboo card expert <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm oh yeah Okay, so now we need to go ahead and splatter all of our projects because that's what's going to make them just shine and finished. Now, let's go back to our pin. Um, so what I like to use for this is clear nail polish. And I could have sworn I had a... You have it? I don't have it. Um, and there was also white paint out there. But I could also use the this guy it's fine don't worry about the white paint uh -huh. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my clothes pin and I'm just gonna add some pigment here um, and I'm gonna do a whitewash just a whitewash on the clothes pin it just makes it easier to dry and I don't, I don't like the weird wood finish that it has. I prefer it to be a little whitewashed. And you can keep adding if you want it. Yeah. We're just daubing. So see how now it looks like whitewashed? Though that's the original and we can go back and do all sides. It's just fine, I think it looks better for this particular project anyway. We're gonna go in and heat it up to dry it up. Okay, um, so the way that I seal these is I use clear nail polish. Okay, so I taught this in my class last time, but you're gonna wanna do about four to five layers of clear nail polish to give it that acrylic look and finish. On both sides. Well, technically the backside only needs two or three layers uh, because that's not the part that shows. It's the front side that you want to make it look like it's acrylic, but the, you really want to do both sides um, because it'll protect the paper from getting wet or make sure you cover the sides up a little bit. If you're making a whole bunch of these, then I, su I suggest you make them all to the state of where we were before we started adding nail polish and then spray them with triple thick sealer. It's so much easier if you're making a bunch of them. Um, you just spray them with triple thick sealer and they look amazing. They just look so amazing once they're done. Um, so I had a, if you missed it, I was a part of the Crafty Chica craft night 
And most of those crafters are like cultural, like Latin crafters, Mexican crafters. And so I taught them how to make these out of the Loteria, which is a Latin, a Mexican game, like kind of like Mexican bingo. Uh, and so it's basically the paper uh, and I turned them into pins or clips. See the little clip? Um, and I just added some beads and some charms and they're, exa they're done exactly the same way. And this one too, let me take it off my apron. Um, so it's the same acrylic piece of cardstock. I just added some pom-pom trim and some crystals to the top and bottom. But check it out. I added a little bit of glitter. But look how cool it looks once the nail polish has hardened. It really protects it from rain or whatever. Water. If you end up forgetting and putting it in the washer, um, the sealer helps prevent it from getting damaged. Um, and I just think they're so much fun. And I've done beautiful, gorgeous flowers using this technique. I just haven't done it in a little while, but I'd love to teach that. I tend to do it quite a bit. Um, you know, I wait for a little bit and then it's a good time to introduce it again in case we have new people. Many of you, if you've been with me for a while, you've, uh, you've seen me teach this already or you've taken a class. Uh, but it's just one of those cool techniques to have in our arsenal of techniques. So again, this is now my second layer. The You want to add through four to five layers to the front and at least two to three layers to the back. It really helps protect your piece and it just makes it look like makes it look like an acrylic piece of cardstock. And I touch this. All right, so you're gonna want to do several layers of that. And once it's completely dry, you're just gonna adhere it to your clothespin for that cool. You know, and then you can add your little sentiments, which I also added the nail polish to. Con corazón, that means with heart. Um, te extraño means I miss you. Uh, and of course, Concha Life, if you want to give them a little sweet Concha in here. So cute. What a cute way to do that. All right, so we want to let that dry and we're going to let that do its thing. While that's happening, we're going to go ahead and splatter. Oh, my splattering brush is on the table. <laughs> we're just over there. Oh, my beans. Okay, here we go. I just like, you know, going back and forth. <laughs> I totally love the way that our peekable card came out. So cute, right? I love it. So yeah, I can't wait to see what we're going to choose to teach next week. Yeah, so Gil is asking if a glaze would work instead of the nail polish. So the answer, the correct answer to that is yes. Um, the problem with glaze sometimes is that it's so thick and it's so watery that it wants to drip down into the uneven part. So if it's not a flat piece of cardstock, like this is not flat, because ultimately we, what we want is the texture and the dimension. If it's not a flat card, then it's gonna want to scoop down into these grooves and then you're gonna have super thick layers of glaze in some areas that'll just take forever to dry. Um, so you just have to be very careful because what's so great about the nail polish and or the spray is that it's not gonna add too much at the same time because the nail polish, you're just brushing on and applying. Um, and so you're just gonna add just the right, right amount. Did you see Gil's? Yeah, that's oh, what okay. I'm answering. Okay. Um, you're just adding the right amount to, to each layer uh, versus adding a big drip of, and the same thing what's gonna happen with the spray. The spray is just going to 
add so that's why we add so many layers because it's a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer of dried acrylic pretty much hopefully that answers your question so maybe if you apply the glaze with a brush but even then you're going to notice because i've tried to do this i used to sell glaze um and so even when you try to apply it with a brush it's gonna want it's gonna it's so heavy that it's going to want to drip down and in to fill in all the nooks and crannies. Uh, and that's just something you need to be cautious about. All right, we're going to grab some white paint. And we're going to add some splatters here because it just makes our life so much better. It just makes me happy. Let's see. See, Miss Gail, maybe apply the glaze with a brush, maybe? Yeah, I have tried to apply a glaze with a brush, but even then you'll find that it's so thick that it's going to want to drip down. So give it a shot. Let me know how. So Debbie Daniel says, Patricia showed us how to do multiple layers of embossing powder. Would that work? So that's different um, because what's going to happen with multiple. So, okay, here we go. Um, so we're talking craft talk, excuse us. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you're using embossing powder, you have to remember that embossing powder is not a lacquer and it's not a glaze. It is a medium of which that medium will, you can do a faux, a faux, um, engraving technique, which is great for that. You can do a cracked glass technique, which we've also done in the past. You can do that. Um, you can do a sealed, um, sealed wax seal technique. We've done that. Uh, the difference with that is because it's more, uh, it doesn't crystallize like a glaze does and it doesn't crystallize like a sealer does because it's more of a, of a third medium. So the reason why we're able to do the cracked glass technique is because let's say if we're going to do clear because obviously you want it to be clear. So you do clear and then you let it, you cool it off and then you do clear and you cool it off and then you do clear and you cool it off. Layer on top of layer on top of layer. Great. The minute that gets moved, it's going to crack because it's laying on top of the surface of your image. Uh, you know, it's almost like a seal pretty much. And so it's just laying right on the very top. If, if you were doing the uh, the embossed metal technique or the uh, the wax technique, then you're doing multiple layers, multiple layers, and while it's still kind of hot and while it's still kind of um, not necessarily all the way cooled, you want to put your rubber stamp on top of that, uh, and so that's going to create the impression, which is not an emboss but a deboss, and so it's going to create that right on top of the multiple layers of embossing powder huh. yeah. is that too wordy <laughs> um so but i say guys always try anything try it see if you love it maybe you're gonna find a brand new technique in the process of that and you're gonna be like whoa that's a cool technique um so that's how we find techniques sometimes is by trying something else and we realize we didn't like it but we love what we've done so check these out they are now all um Splattered and they have dazzling pat. Oh, I think I missed this one for dazzling pat. What? <laughs> I don't see anything sparkly on it. That's good information though, because you know there, we might have new people on here that didn't know that, and that's good, good info. All right. So don't be self-conscious. We've got these little clips that we could have, we've made. Um, and you basically just want to keep adding uh, layers. This one now has three layers that, as you can see, it's almost all the way dry and it looks pretty amazing. Now, something super cool that I'm going to do now before, so that before I sign off, just so you guys can see it, is I'm going to add one more layer here. This is now going to be our fourth layer, I think. And you can decide to, like, if you're not going to make a paper pin for this, then four layers is enough. If you're just going to use it as an embellishment, 
then four layers is more than enough. The only reason why you need multiple layers if if you're gonna be doing it, turning them into earrings, um, turning them into a pin that people Pinch. wear. The reason why is in case if it rains and they're outside and you know whatever that might be, you want to protect them from different things that might damage the paper. So the seal is there to help protect the paper. But clear nail polish, you know, you can get at any store. Unless you're allergic. I know some people have said, hey, I'm allergic to the smell of nail polish. But they even sell them at the 99 cent store. Mm -hmm. Clear nail polish. Just FYI. It doesn't have to be good clear nail polish. Just clear nail polish. Um, all right. So while it's still wet on this last coat... I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of glitter, okay? So that just add, it, it'll dry into that coat of the clear nail polish. Oops. Um, it'll dry into that coat of the nail, clear nail polish, and check it out. Oh, no, I'm making it away. You see it? Super cute. It's so sparkly. And now it's a sparkly concha. <laughs> I'm going to eat it sparkly. <laughs> So check it out, guys. I think it's so much fun. It's super cute. Debbie Daniel says, perfect. Thanks, Archie. Carmen says, it's beautiful. Ms. Donna Blatt, such cute cards. Thank you so much. No, Congrats. thank you guys so much. Again, when you're getting ready to finish these off, you just go ahead and add it. I did add foam squares to my wording. You see them? Yay. Yeah. Um, just to lift them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Super and cute. I just glued them with wet glue. Uh, and it's perfect for a little note to share with a loved one. Super cute. So amazing, guys. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to spend the afternoon with us. I have taken... <gasps> Two hours. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> I've taken two hours. Holy Hannah, it is 3.20. We have Rita. So she's from the UK. Love Hi, the Rita. demos and results. They're lovely. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Rita. I hope that you take time to go back and see the other live classes that we've taught. This is our fourth week free class. Um, and just for fun. There's so much inspiration, so many ideas. I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy it. Guys, thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Remember, you can always catch us free on Facebook every Tuesdays and Thursdays with more education. Uh, and even on Wednesday, we're coming in, we're jumping in, we're trying to keep you inspired, we're trying to keep you going, and we're trying to keep you making amazing happen and bringing paper to life. Guys, thanks again so much. If you're new to this channel make sure that you subscribe make sure that you tell a friend and make sure that you continue to keep our community growing so that we have more amazing ideas to share with everybody uh, and more community to jump in and give us their areas of expertise as well guys thanks again for joining us have a blessed week ahead and we will connect with you guys again next week adios